Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back once again to another Fallout 4 settlement build. Today we're going to be checking out a new player home that I've made, located inside the University Point Pharmacy. Now I'd have to say, the last player home we did might have been the Man Cave that we built inside of the Red Rocket truck stop, but it really does feel like it's been forever since we did that build, so I thought it might be a good idea to try somewhat of an updated version, but obviously in a new location. And once the walkthrough's over, feel free to let me know which build out of the two you prefer. That being said, hopefully you guys end up enjoying the build. And without further ado, let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now for starters, I'll try and give you guys somewhat of a general overview of the entire build. And if I had to say one thing that I really didn't like about this place, it would have to be the fact that it really is just one big open area. Personally, I wish it was at least divided into a few separate rooms, which as you can see in a way I've tried doing by separating the different areas with curtains, barrels, or even just smaller counters. Though when it really comes down to it, this has still been one of my favorites, if not the best location I've found to build in. There's really so many ways you can go about it, and I think in the future I may try doing a few different variations in here. Maybe not necessarily more player homes, but you never know, I could try a store or somewhat of a brotherhood or a railroad base in here. But anyways, that kind of concludes the general overview, so I think as of now the best way to go about this would just be to kind of start over here on the left and then work our way over since it is a rather large area. So, for starters, this here is the armory, and this is the second variation of it that I've tried out. I think the first one was a bit too spread out, and it covered not only this part of the wall, but even quite a bit further over to the right. And in the end, I thought that just looked way too flat and boring, so I tried my best to condense it down a bit, and I think this version has turned out a lot better. And so on this wall, we have the big sign up above, just to add a bit more flavor to it, and then obviously there's the various weapon racks which contain weapons that I found throughout my playthrough. Some of which I just thought were cool but never used, and then others that maybe weren't all that unique but I found to be quite useful throughout my time in the wasteland. There's also a few outfits, one of which is a damaged hazmat suit that I just recently found in a bunker on Far Harbor. And then the outfit to the right is just a mix of clothing items that I thought looked pretty cool. And I think I wore that outfit maybe a few times throughout my main playthrough, although... For me at least, I was never a huge fan of wearing helmets, so I don't remember keeping that one on for too long. There's also a lot of ammo, I must say, and other than that, just a few boxes for storing either more weapons or even a few more outfits. Other than the armory, there's also quite a few other collectibles that I found on this character. As you guys can see, we have quite a few comic books, and those include some of my favorites like the Tesla Science, the Astoundingly Awesome Tales, and also a few of the Unstoppables as well. And then to the right of that, there's my bobblehead collection. And by the looks of it, at this point, we only have four more to find. I have no clue where they are, but hopefully one of these days I'll get around to completing my collection. Now I must say, out of the entire build, I think this might be my favorite area, just because everything's really close together and it's got, at least in my opinion, a pretty nice atmosphere back here too. I know it's not all that bright, it may even be a little bit too dark, but part of me enjoys that, especially since it is the bedroom and I think that's really how it should be. And speaking of the bedroom, over in this area we have the safe, which at the moment is empty, and it's also got a few decorations above it. There's also the bed with a sleeping bag on top of it, just to give it a bit of variation, along with the curtains to add some privacy. A few more storage devices below it, and you'll notice the red crate is actually a bit smaller than it should be. And that's because this time around I decided to mess around a bit with the scale of items, so throughout this build you'll see a few more 
not only crates but also other items that really don't match up to their normal sizes. Finally in the bedroom area we also have my desk along with a few other decorations as well. And overall, not only for this area but the rest of the build as well, I really tried making sure almost every item had either some sort of significance to me or my character. So for instance, this magazine here is one of my favorite looking ones. I always enjoyed that alien on the cover. The jet was my favorite chem to use. The number 41 represents the total number of settlement builds we've done so far. And sitting above the safe, as you may have noticed, is the mechanist's helmet. And I put that there just because not only is it a pretty cool looking item, but it also really just represents one of my favorite quests. Not only in Fallout 4, but also in Fallout 3 too. And then this little counter or bar to the right hand side also kind of houses a few more neat items and serves as a pretty good separation between the two areas as well. Those of which being the bedroom and I guess what you could call the living room of this build. And in terms of items on this, we also have one more comic book, a pretty cool looking vault tech lunchbox, and then I think the two people in that picture back there might be the main character and then his wife Nora but I figured that would make for a pretty cool backstory and maybe it would indicate that my character kind of had to dig through all the rubble to find that thing maybe back in his old home next up we have the living room which we caught a quick glimpse of earlier but let's go ahead and take a bit of a closer look at it now so this little shelf behind the couch has a few items that are pretty neat, such as the Silver Shroud calling card, and also the signed baseball card that you have to get for the Swatter guy in Diamond City. Can't remember his name, but I remember you had to get that, and then I think it was maybe a Lucky Baseball Bat or Lucky Baseball Glove for him too, although I couldn't find those sadly. And I even threw down a TV dinner tray too. Not only to make my character's life a bit more comfortable, but also because, as you can see, there's really not a whole lot of room left on the coffee table. As for the living room, that really is about it, although we do have a couple mounted creatures on the wall, such as ghouls and also a deathclaw. And I think other than those, the only other mounted creature we have would be the radstag in the bar area. And overall, I really enjoy how this turned out. And I'd have to say, overall, my favorite detail is the iBot. Now, for those who have played Fallout New Vegas, you might recognize this from the Good Spring Saloon. That was always one of my favorite details about that place. And overall, that was the main inspiration behind me making this here on my bar, too. Though I have tried to give it my own little personal touch. Might be a bit tough to see because it is so small, but... If you really look closely, you might notice that Kellogg's brain is sitting there on the bar. So I was thinking, since at this point my character really doesn't have too much to do, maybe he thought it would be a neat idea to rewire an iBot and maybe try and put Kellogg's brain in there. He may not end up being the most friendly iBot, but I'm sure for a robot he'd be able to fight pretty damn well. Now before we move on to the next area, we'll go ahead and cover a few more details here that really stand out in my mind, such as the ham radio and comic books. And when it comes to these, I was thinking since, once again, my character doesn't have too much to do nowadays, maybe for fun he would spend his time reading comic books to the wasteland. And since the Commonwealth already has its own radio host, I figured this would be a decent alternative. There was sort of a mix between that and the Silver Shroud radio. Oh, and for those wondering, the green circle around the clock is just a resized O from the set of neon lights. And then the iBot is actually from the model iBot that came with the Automatron DLC. 
But anyways, other than that, to kind of conclude this area, we've also got a bit of liquor and food along the back wall, just to kind of fit the theme of this being my own personal bar. And speaking of making things personal, we also have my favorite T-51 power armor helmet sitting on top of that shelf. My favorite used to be the X-01, but over time, the T-51 really just started to grow on me. But I will say, the X-01 is still a very, very close second. Moving on, I guess you could say this is technically still part of the bar, but it's just one more shelf to store a few more comic books on, and also a little brochure that I found in Far Harbor. We've also got a pretty cool bathroom in the back room that surprisingly was already pretty much built up before I even started making this place. Although I tend not to come back here too often. For some reason Bethesda thought it would be a neat idea to place down this really really creepy statue up here in all the rubble. And I can't help but get the feeling that one of these days he's gonna break out of that rubble somehow and end up coming after me. Last but not least, we have my game room, which includes a pool table, some liquor, and some more weapons along the back wall, a little lounge area off to the right, and on this table there's some food, some comics, and also a pencil and paper, just in case he needed to keep score for some kind of a pool game. But anyways guys, that's going to do it for today, so hopefully you did end up enjoying the build. It's definitely been one of my favorites to make thus far, and I especially love the amount of personality I was able to throw in it. But yeah, like usual, feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and if you guys have any ideas for future builds you might want to see me try, I always appreciate hearing those. All that out of the way though, thanks again for watching guys, and as always, I will see you in the next one.